Southern California. Our incredible, diverse community, open for all to explore. And this is your ultimate guide. From arts, entertainment, food, history, and culture, it's all a part of the SoCal scene. Tonight, on a special vintage LA edition of the SoCal scene, it was the place for celebrities to be and be seen during Hollywood's golden age. And the 95-year-old Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel is still as glamorous as ever. Come along as I get a VIP tour. Beautiful. Isn't gorgeous, she stunning? Beautiful. Then, a visit to Norm's restaurant on La Cienega Boulevard. It's been serving up food for 73 years, but there's something about Norm's you may not know. This is a mid-century modern masterpiece of the absolute highest order, not to mention a California classic. And later, a little something for your sweet tooth. We have a top five list of some of the best old school diners where you can grab mouth-watering dessert. Welcome everybody to the SoCal scene. I'm Allison Martino. Hollywood is synonymous with entertainment and star power. And when you think back to the golden age, the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel was front and center. Opening in 1927, the hotel played host to legendary icons, including Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable. Today, the Hollywood Roosevelt still glitters with all its glory. And I got the VIP treatment with this exclusive tour. Hi, Juan. How are you, Allison? So good to be back. Welcome to the Roosevelt. I can't wait to see what you've all done. Well, you know what? We got a little time, so let's come and show you. Okay. We just went through a huge renovation in 2021, brought it back to 1935. Tell me about the history of the Hollywood Roosevelt. We're celebrating a 95th anniversary this year. We opened our doors on May 15th, 1927 with the idea of actually hosting Celebration of Hollywood. On May 16th, 1929, we host that very first celebration, the birth of the Academy Awards here at the Roosevelt. <laughs> now let's talk about this gorgeous historic lobby. We called on the gentleman who had actually painted the ceiling here at the Roosevelt in 1927. He had passed away, but his son did his father's work. So he said, I will come in, complete the work, and restore it back to the original splendor. The original chandelier that you see in the middle of the historic mm. lobby, we restored it back to the original look. Tell me some of the Hollywood legends that have stayed at the Hollywood Roosevelt over the years. From Clark Gable and Carol Lombard, to probably the most iconic guest that we've had, Marilyn Monroe, to Reese Witherspoon and Renee Zellweger staying here in the lucky sweet 1010 that we call. <laughs> if you win an Oscar, that's where you're staying. So speaking of the Oscars, show me the Blossom Room where the very first Oscars were held. Absolutely, okay. no visit to the Roosevelt's complete unless you visit Blossom Ballroom. So let's go take a look at it, come on. Welcome to the beautiful oh, Blossom oh, Ballroom. Oh my God. Here at the Hollywood Roosevelt. Beautiful. Isn't Gorgeous. she stunning? Beautiful. It was home to the very first Academy Award. Oh my God, I can just feel the vibes of the very first Oscars in here. Can you believe that? Oh my God. May 16th, 1929, we host the very first Academy Awards in this beautiful ballroom. Well, this is, must have been like one of the table setups, like, right? It was. So what kind of events happened in the Blossom Room? She's still doing two of the largest film festivals here in Los Angeles, Turner Classic Movie Festival, of course, and AFI. And this room probably just transforms into whatever you need it to be. You can just imagine. This is the Clark Gable Carol Lombard penthouse. It's called that because this was their love nest back in the 30s. It was also home to Prince in 2007 when he had sold out shows here at the Roosevelt and the Blossom Ballroom. And then recently it was featured in A Star is Born with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Allison, this is the rooftop of the penthouse where our very famous Roosevelt sign lives. Yes. Best views I mean, of all of town. You have Century City downtown, and of course the Hollywood Hills. I mean, the Hollywood sign. Tons of events. <laughs> you can't even get better than Hollywood than that. These right here are the Shirley Temple oh, Stairs. Oh gosh. Now they're called the Shirley Temple Stairs because she would come over here and practice for hours on by. And then, Ooh, also in that. our historic lobby, Oh, we have our huge. letter box. The drop goes from every floor wow. upstairs oh to the historic lobby. So literally the 12 floors above us 
drop into this letterbox and it still gets picked up every day by the post office. Imagine all the postcards that were in here back in the day. And no tour is complete at the Roosevelt until you get to see the Tropicana pool. Ooh, let's go take a look at it. Let's go. Oh, gorgeous. This pool that you see right here is not just any pool. Right. It was hand painted by the great David Hockney in 1988. Can you believe that? No. It's valued at a million and a half dollars. I've seen pictures when there was no water in it and he's just drawing it up and he's restoring it. Absolutely. How exciting. And Marilyn Monroe. Well, in this very spot right here used to be a diving board. Right. And this is where Marilyn takes her very first photo shoot. Now, these are two of my favorite drinks here at the Roosevelt. Thank you so much. Cheers to the Hollywood Roosevelt. Thank you for coming and joining us. There really is so much to see and celebrate around that historic area of the Hollywood Roosevelt. You can park anywhere near the intersection of Hollywood and Highland, where you're right there to take it all in. The SoCal scene will be right back. Up next, a look inside the legendary Greystone Mansion and a tour of its exquisite English gardens. From here, you can see downtown LA all the way to Santa Monica. And later, a visit to an iconic landmark that's been serving up food for 73 years. You have the best hash browns, hands down. Plus, a list of old-fashioned diners where you can grab some delicious dessert in our SoCal 5. Stay with us. Welcome back. Greystone Mansion is one of the greatest estates ever created in Southern California. You may recognize this enormous 55-room Gothic mansion from dozens of movies and TV shows. I got a rare one-on-one -on -one private tour of the home and its breathtaking gardens. Hi. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Right on in. Oh, my gosh. It's always such a treat to see this beautiful grand entrance. During the 1920s, very few cities could compete with the magnificent estates in Beverly Hills. The movie industry was booming and movie stars were America's royalty. And they lived like royalty too, in palaces like this one above Sunset Boulevard. Although this particular 55-room estate wasn't built by a cinema star, it was built by oil tycoon Edward Lawrence Doheny. So tell me, when was the mansion built and who was the architect? The house was completed in 1928. It took about three years to build the grounds and the mansion. Gordon B. Kaufman was the architect for the mansions. He did the LA Times building. He worked on the Hoover Dam. The family moved in in 1928. Ned Doheny was tragically shot and killed five months later, but Mrs. Doheny stayed. The kids grew up here, there are five kids. Mrs. Doheny stayed, she remarried about four years later. The person that they sold the house to, he never moved here, he never moved in. So the Dohenys are the only family to have actually owned and lived in the house. And then he sold the house to the city of Beverly Hills in 1965. And it's been owned by the city of Beverly Hills ever since. So tell me, what is the significance of the house? How is it important to Beverly Hills? The history of Beverly Hills is all about these big, grand estates. Beverly Hills starts with the Beverly Hills Hotel and all of those grand estates that movie stars were building over by there. But a lot of them were torn down over the years. And so when it looked like there's a chance that Greystone might be torn down in the 1960s, there was a big movement to save Greystone. And that was really one of the reasons. This is this important part of Beverly Hills' history um, as an example of that type of big estate. The elaborate living room was designed specifically for entertaining. Up in the balcony is where musicians often performed on special occasions. This is the living room. So this is the largest room in the house. Mm -hmm. It's the only double story room. Okay. And uh, interesting fact, the house did not have a ballroom. And so we think they use this room for their ballroom as well. So the scale of this mansion is so large. I don't even know by looking at it how many bedrooms, how many living rooms. Go right. through it all with me now. 55 rooms plus closets and bathrooms all together. In terms of bedrooms, you've got seven family bedrooms, mm -hmm. two guest bedrooms. Mm -hmm. You've got bathrooms for most of the bedrooms. It's amazing in scope and scale, 46,000 square feet. Oh my gosh, 46,000 square feet. Because you can't really see it driving, you know, on, the, on sunset and coming up this street. But once you hit the grounds, it just seems to go on forever and ever. Yeah, it kind of wraps around you. Right. I love this place. How can I how can I not, honestly? Because you've got the combination of this amazing mansion and then these grounds. And so you get to walk around and enjoy this beautiful park that's open to the public. I I love that. To get a first hand view of those grounds, we took a tour with one of Greystone's park rangers. Greystone Mansion is a public park, which I don't think a lot of people know that, right? 
That's correct. Uh, we're a little hidden gem in the city of Beverly Hills. The park is about 18 acres. What can you tell me about these gorgeous grounds? So this is our former garden. Uh, this is where we have all of our weddings when we go into our wedding season. We do have other events here, like the mayor's State of the City address. So Juan, tell me about this picturesque view that we're standing at right now. This is probably the most picturesque part of the mansion. From here, you can see downtown LA all the way to Santa Monica. And there's even more hidden gems to discover back inside with Sarah. From the grand staircase to the two-story living room, it seems like everywhere you turn, there's a glimpse of Greystone's spellbinding Gothic revival design around each and every corner. So imagine it's 1928. It's the middle of Prohibition. Originally, you would have pressed this button, and a little magic door opens up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. I mean, this truly is amazing. It this is, has got to be the greatest hidden gem in the whole entire mansion and then this amazing restored bowling alley. Paul Thomas Anderson, when he came in here with his production, the bowling alley wasn't in that good of shape, right? Did their production yeah. restore this? They did. When they wanted to film There Will Be Blood here, they wanted to film here because of the Doheny connection. It was one of the reasons. And so, like, a lot of what you see here was not here. The lights weren't here, the ball returns weren't mm -hmm. here. It was in very bad shape. Right. I'm always going through old TV shows and movies, freeze framing on every single detail, trying to find something in the background that I didn't know was there, especially some of the early ones that were filmed here in the 60s. There Will Be Blood is the big, big epic scene in that movie that we all recognize, The Bowling Alley, but there were like a hundred movies shot here over the years. You know, some of the early ones are the best for seeing a lot of Greystone, things like Dead Ringer with Betty Davis, Disorderly Orderly with Jerry Lewis. Then you've got All of Me with Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin. Jumping away from movies for a moment, but this is when we get a lot of people excited about Gilmore Girls. Mm -hmm. This was Chilton Academy. What's the future of Greystone? So much, I hope. You know, a, a combination. We have the great grounds so people can continue to enjoy nature. We're really trying to focus on arts and culture here as well. We have this wonderful theater. We are hoping later this summer to start programming actually here in the theater, both live performance and cinema, as well as spaces like the living room we are in in the mansion. We do about 40 weddings here a year, plus private events, corporate events, nonprofit events. So I love any time we can open the mansion. And so stay tuned for a lot more to come. The Greystone Gardens are open daily and free to the public. For more information on visiting the mansion, visit greystonemansion.org. We'll be right back. Still to come on the SoCal scene, a visit to an iconic landmark that's been serving up food for 73 years. This is an icon, more than just a restaurant. And later, a list of old school diners where you can grab some dessert in our SoCal thought. Welcome back to the SoCal scene. You've probably driven by that iconic landmark, Norm's Restaurant, on La Cienega Boulevard many times. But what you may not know is that building itself is a historical site. It's a prime example of Googie architecture, a type of structure that was once SoCal's signature style. I visited Norm's and, of course, sampled some of the great food that they've been serving up for 73 years. <laughs> It's that place on La Cienega Boulevard in West Hollywood that's open day and night. And it's been here since 1957. Its iconic sign is a welcoming beacon I'm convinced you can see from space. Norm's is the crown jewel of what is known as Googie architecture. And I stopped in recently with my friend, the Southern California historian, Charles Phoenix. I mean, you know, you pull in the parking lot here, you don't even know what year this building was built. This is a timeless classic. This building is so avant-garde. It is so fashion forward. This is a mid-century modern masterpiece of the absolute highest order, not to mention a California classic. Googie Architecture started in the mid-1950s in Los Angeles and was named after Googie's coffee shop that was next door to Schwab's pharmacy on Sunset Boulevard. They were structures that grabbed attention coffee shops, car washes, motels, even the 76 gas station that's still open in Beverly Hills today. It's very space age, it's very fun, it's very colorful, it's very, you know, uh, artistically flamboyant, stylized. You can still see some remaining examples of the Googie style around SoCal. 
Inside Norms is a googie feast for the eyes. Long dining counters, orange booths, rock walls, even a clock that has been keeping time for over 60 years. The googie decor inspiring many who've come through these doors for the last six decades. The coffee shop also inspired artist Ed Ruscha to paint Norm's La Cienega on fire, which is now at the Broad Museum. Since they never close, recently I had breakfast with Norm's president and CEO Mike Colonna just after sunrise one morning. One of the things we talk about at Norm's is where life happens. Yeah, I love that. And, and a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of brands have like a slogan or a tagline. But it's so true here. That's the great thing about a diner. You know, you have a nice building. We have great food. We have good value, mm -hmm. even in Hollywood. But you have to have great people. Great people and food is what Norm's has always been about. It started in 1949 by Norm Roybark, opening one of the first 24-7 diners in SoCal. Norm, um, legend has it, liked to play the ponies. Really? And he used to go to Santa Anita. And um, the story goes that he sat there and he saw the $1 window, the $3 window, and the $5 window back then. And he says, I want a restaurant that has a $1 window. And that was kind of the foundation of his value proposition. On the front line of Norm's value proposition of serving up great food at reasonable prices is executive chef David Cox. I've been coming here for breakfast my whole life. What are we having this morning? Uh, this morning I wanted to make the melting pot omelet. It's been on the menu forever and it's a staple. It's our number one seller. You have the best hash browns, hands down. Oh, thank you. And I think I see some right there. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, we use uh, fresh fresh hash browns. That was That's what differentiates us from, uh, I think, a lot of the competition. Uh -huh. We give a, a good sized portion. Uh. Our portion's the size of the spatula. <laughs> and then we flip them over. We cook oh, both sides, that? nice and golden brown. And those homemade hotcakes are absolutely amazing. Uh, we make our batter fresh daily. We use a special flour, fresh buttermilk. Our hot cakes are about six inches in diameter, so they're nice and big. David says they serve up around 1,000 hot cakes a day. And they go through a staggering 12 million eggs and a million pounds of hash brown potatoes a year. The melting pot omelet David made for me is really the perfect breakfast dish. So good. How many Norm's locations are there right now? We have 22. Uh, we should be at 25 next year. And while I was here for breakfast this day, Norm's offers great lunch and dinner options too. In this crazy town that we live in, we're losing so much, so much new development. This luckily has been landmarked. The realm of the reality of Norm's, for example, this is an icon more than just a restaurant, more than just a mid-century modern masterpiece. This is a world-class national treasure. It's a piece of art, it's a cultural icon, and really represents something completely unique that is totally Southern California on its own. There's no other place like Norm's. This building, not to mention how much do we love the pancakes. For more information about Norm's restaurants and its 22 locations around SoCal, visit norms.com. Up next, the SoCal Five and a list of some of the best old school diners to get dessert. It's time for the SoCal Five, our version of an A-list. This week, we're focusing on some of the best old school diners to visit for dessert in Southern California that will no doubt satisfy your sweet tooth. A South Pasadena landmark since 1915, Fair Oaks Pharmacy is a well-known attraction along the famous Route 66. Visiting this old-fashioned soda fountain and ice cream parlor is like stepping back in time. It even contains a functioning pharmacy and a gift shop packed with 50s memorabilia. Check out their famous soda fountain, allegedly created because the medicine tasted so bad, they incorporated soda fountains to complement the pharmacy. Located at the original farmer's market off 3rd and Fairfax, Local Ice serves their delicious cold treats on the market's west patio. Made in small batches using organic ingredients, their creamy ice cream and dairy-free Italian ices are handcrafted on site for you to enjoy. Classic treats like splits, sundaes, and milkshakes are also available. In Woodland Hills, you'll discover Sloan's Ice Cream, located at the village at Westfield, Topanga. Originating in South Florida in 1999, Sloan's has made its way to the West Coast where customers can receive terrific service, unforgettable ice cream, and great fun. 
A recipient for numerous awards for best luxury ice cream, Sloan's is something the entire family can enjoy. For over 100 years, Fossilman's Ice Cream Company has delighted taste buds with a simple but powerful philosophy. They hand make the most delicious ice cream by using only the finest ingredients. Located in the city of Alhambra since 1973, this family-owned parlor brings you over 40 award-winning ice cream flavors, as well as a selection of sorbets and yogurts. And if you want, be sure to buy a half-gallon tub to take home when your future cravings strike. And finally, Handel's Homemade Ice Cream has been made fresh daily at their multiple stores since 1945. Handel's uses high-quality ingredients to make its fine ice creams, sherbets, low-fat yogurts, and ices. In addition to its full roster of year-round flavors, Handel's prepares special seasonal or occasional ice creams to satisfy your sweet tooth any time of year. Be sure to check online for a store near you. See, we've got you covered for all things diner and dessert. You'll find the complete SoCal 5 list on our website. That's our show for tonight. But before we let you go, email us at SoCalScene at Charter.com with any suggestions, ideas, or comments on the show. We want to hear from you. Good night, everybody.